Have you ever wondered why String Buffer is such a crucial part of Java? Well, it's time to unravel this mystery. In the realm of Java, String Buffer is a class used for creating mutable strings. Unlike string objects, which are immutable, String Buffer objects are dynamic. This means their value can be changed, making them a valuable tool in the hands of Java developers. Mutable strings are important because they allow for more efficient memory usage. When we modify a string instead of creating a new object, we can simply alter the existing one, saving both memory and processing time. This simple yet powerful feature sets String Buffer apart, making it a cornerstone in the construction of efficient and robust Java programs. So why does this matter? Because in the world of programming, efficiency is king. And understanding how tools like String Buffer contribute to this efficiency is fundamental. In the next few minutes, we shall dive deep into the world of String Buffer and explore its intricacies. First things first, what exactly is String Buffer? Well, in the realm of Java programming, a String Buffer is an interesting creature that offers a twist on the traditional concept of strings. At its core, a String Buffer is a peer class of string that provides much of the same functionality. However, it has a few unique characteristics that set it apart. The most significant difference between a string and a string buffer lies in their mutability. In Java, a string is immutable, meaning once it's created, it cannot be changed. Every time you try to modify a string, a new object is created in the memory, leaving the original string unaltered. On the other hand, a string buffer is mutable. It can be modified over its lifetime without creating new, unnecessary objects in memory. This mutability can make String Buffer a more efficient choice in scenarios where you need to perform multiple modifications to a string. Let's imagine a sculptor working with two mediums, marble and clay. A string in Java is like marble, beautiful and strong but not very forgiving. Once you've made a cut, there's no going back. A string buffer, however, is like clay. It's flexible, malleable, and can be reshaped over and over again until the artist gets it just right. Moreover, string buffer is thread safe, meaning it is safe to use in a multi-threaded environment thanks to its synchronized methods. You can think of it like a well-organized kitchen. Even if multiple chefs are working at the same time, there's no risk of them stepping on each other's toes or messing up the dishes. That's not to say that string buffer is always the better choice. Like all tools, it's about using the right one for the job. For instance, if you're dealing with a string that won't need to change, using string is more appropriate. As we have seen, string buffer offers a flexible alternative to strings. But how does it work? Stay tuned to find out. We'll be diving into the inner workings of string buffer in our next segment. You'll learn how to implement it in your code and when it's most advantageous to use. Until then, keep exploring and coding. And now that we know what string buffer is, let's understand how it works. Diving straight into it, string buffer, much like a Swiss army knife, is a class in Java that is equipped with various methods allowing an array of modifications. These methods, such as append, insert, reverse and delete, are the gears that keep the string buffer machine running smoothly. The append method is one of the most widely used functions of string buffer. It allows us to add or rather append any type of data to the end of the string. This means that we can add integers, characters, strings and even other string buffers to our original string. Think of it as adding another car to a moving train. The train keeps moving forward but now there's an extra car attached at the end. Next, we have the insert method, which, as the name suggests, lets us insert data at any point in the string. It's like taking a sentence, finding the exact spot where you want to add a word, and then seamlessly sliding it in. The sentence still makes sense, but now it has a new element that wasn't there before. The reverse method, on the other hand, flips the string around, reversing its order. It's like walking a path you've just taken, but in the opposite direction. You're still on the same path, but now you're seeing things from a different perspective. Lastly, we have the delete method. This one lets us remove a part of the string, starting from a specific index up to another. It's like erasing a mistake on a piece of paper. The paper is still there, but the mistake isn't. These are just a few examples of the many methods that string buffer offers. And the best part? 
All these modifications can be done without creating a new instance, which saves memory and makes your code more efficient. The various methods of string buffer make it highly versatile. Now let's see how we can use it in our coding. Implementing string buffer in our code is straightforward, but there are some nuances to keep in mind. To start off, we need to initialize a string buffer object. This is done using the new keyword, followed by string buffer. This will create a new string buffer object with no characters in it and an initial capacity of 16 characters. However, we can also specify a capacity or a string during initialization if we wish. Here's a simple example. String buffer buffer equal sign new string buffer. Now we have an empty string buffer object ready to be used. So how do we add characters to it? Well, that's where the append method comes in. It allows us to add data of any type to the end of the string buffer. For instance, buffer append hello world adds the string hello world to the end of the buffer. Now let's say we want to insert a string at a specific position in the string buffer. We can use the insert method for this. The first argument is the index at which we want to insert and the second argument is the string to be inserted. Like so, buffer, insert, zero, greetings. This inserts the string greetings at the beginning of the buffer. Moreover, string buffer can also modify strings. For instance, the replace method replaces a part of the string with another string. It takes three arguments, the start index, the end index, and the string to replace with. And the reverse method? That one reverses the order of characters in the string buffer, like turning hello world into dolro ol h. You may be wondering why we would use string buffer when we have string. The key difference is that strings in Java are immutable. Once a string object is created, it cannot be changed. On the other hand, string buffer is mutable, allowing us to modify strings without creating new objects. As you can see, string buffer can be a handy tool in our programming arsenal. But when should we use it? Understanding when to use string buffer can really optimize your coding process. Let's dive into the scenarios where using string buffer can be a game changer. The first and foremost is when you're dealing with strings that are expected to undergo modifications. In Java, strings are immutable, which means once a string is created, it can't be changed. So if you're frequently modifying a string, you're actually creating a new one each time, which can be a real drain on memory. This is where string buffer comes in. It's mutable, meaning it allows modifications without creating new instances. So if your application involves a lot of string manipulations like concatenation or appending, string buffer can be a real boon. Another scenario where string buffer shines is in multi-threaded environments. If you're working on an application where multiple threads are manipulating the string data, string buffer ensures thread safety. It's synchronized, which means only one thread can access it at a time, avoiding any potential inconsistencies or issues. Now, let's talk about the advantages of string buffer over other string handling classes. Compared to the string class, as we've already discussed, the mutable nature of string buffer makes it a more efficient choice for string operations. It's also more memory efficient compared to String Builder, another string handling class in multi-threaded environments due to its synchronized nature. However, it's worth noting that String Builder can be faster than String Buffer in single-threaded environments, as it doesn't have the overhead of synchronization. So if you're working in a single-threaded environment and performance is a key factor, String Builder might be a better choice. In the end, it's all about choosing the right tool for the right job. Understanding the characteristics and strengths of each string handling class can help you make better decisions and write more efficient code. Knowing when to use string buffer can help you write more efficient code. But remember, every tool has its pros and cons. Let's quickly recap what we've learned so far. We began our journey by introducing string buffer in Java, a mutable sequence of characters that provides an efficient way to handle and manipulate strings. We then delved into the specifics of what a string buffer is and how it operates, shedding light on its ability to modify the string without creating a new instance. We took a deep dive into the practical implementation of string buffer, discussing how to append, insert, delete and replace strings, as well as how to convert string buffer to a string. We also explored when to use string buffer, underscoring its value in scenarios where string manipulation is frequent 
And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to string buffer in Java. Remember, the best way to master it is through practice. So go ahead and start coding.